Hello, everybody. Where's the brother that was preaching first? I want to talk to him. He was on fire. Amen. <laughs> He's gone. Oh, my God. That was amazing. I, I think uh, it's I think it's wonderful that he's like that. I really like that. Um, unfortunately, in some of our parishes, not yours, that is not, unfortunately, they don't let the spirit flow. So that was wonderful. It was beautiful. And uh, today I'm going to talk to you about the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's and most importantly, I want to do something. I'm going to ask Deacon Doug to to pray at the end. Um, for each and every one of you. Because as you know, when we're baptized, we receive the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. Amen? We all have them. We all do. So I'm going to ask Deacon Doug to, to pray for each and every one of you. I'll pray for you too. Will you let us do that? Because those gifts are there, right? And sometimes we don't exercise them for whatever reason. I'm also going to pray for you because I want the charismatic gifts of the Holy Spirit also to fall upon your life. So that's mainly my goal, because you're already the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. But I want to tell you a little bit um, about my life shortly, yes? Many, many years ago, I didn't want to be part of the church for whatever reason. But God is so wonderful that he has changed my life the brother at the beginning, he was saying he did a bunch of things. I'm not going to tell you what I did because I'm ashamed of what I did. But it was kind of like that. But when you give control to the Holy Spirit, your life changes. Amen? So let me ask you something. Are we waiting for God, for the Holy Spirit to do something in our lives? Yes or no? Yes or no? Because sometimes God is telling us, we tell God, hey, God, I'm waiting for you. But God says, uh-uh, I'm waiting for you. I'm waiting for you to release, to, to let it, you know, to let it flow. Because sometimes we hold back. Amen? I see the sisters, and I was watching, um, I was listening to one of the sisters. She was dressed like you. And uh, she was saying that some people think that, you know, religious life is boring. And she was saying, no, it's not. Because once you give your life to the Holy Spirit, then it's exciting. Every day is different. Is that what it is? Amen. And, and I, I think that's, that's wonderful. Even my children tell me, my children, I call them my babies. I have an 18-year-old, a 23-year-old, and a 30-year-old. They're my babies. They'll be my babies. But I have two boys at home right now that tell me, Dad, get a hobby, please. I said, why? Because you're always reading about church, always want to learn about church. Don't you get bored? And I said, no, I don't get bored. This is, this is my passion. This is what I like to do. I like to learn. I like to talk about God and the Holy Spirit. Then God has guided me. I go to different places. I don't know why. Because I'm not like the brother that was here in the beginning. I wasn't, I'm not like William. I like the way you talk, brother. You have a very, very special gift. So I, I enjoy that. I don't have that, but I don't know. The Holy Spirit takes me places. I don't know why. So I'm here to, to, to basically invite you not to be afraid. Not to be afraid. We're talking about miracles. You guys believe the Holy Spirit, God is still acts and Miracles happen, yes or no? You know, a lot of times when people tell me, let's go pray for somebody that is sick, that has cancer. I see some of our brothers and sisters that go with me and we pray for that person. They're like, uh, yeah, God, we ask you. Like, there's, we, we need to pray for the gift of faith also. We need to believe that if we pray for someone that is sick, we need to believe we have to have that faith that God is going to heal that person. Who here would like to have the gift of healing? Raise your hand. I want everybody to raise their hand because right now we need, we need it. We need it in our community. Say, man, we need it. You know, it is difficult. One of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, I'm going to fortitude and wisdom. I'm going to talk about, um, but I want to share a little bit with you. Two days ago, my wife sent me a text and she tells me, you know, my my mom, she they just gave gave her, you know, diagnostics. She went to uh, they did a biopsy, and she has cancer, and it's very aggressive. This is two days ago. 
So she's, she's a one -on -one woman of God. But that's the time when we say, baby, I said, baby, don't worry about it. Everything is in God's hands. Amen. And I said, we're going to go pray for her. And when we go pray for her, we cannot, the doctors say it's very aggressive. It's, it's bad, but I, I tell her we need to go and pray for her and have faith that God is going to heal her. Amen. You know, a lot of people tell us, like tell me personally, you know, it's non-believers, of course. Why you guys have believed so much in God? When someone is sick with cancer and God's, God heals that person, you guys say, eh, hey, it's God. But when you pray for someone that is sick and that person doesn't get healed, you say it's it God's will. So I don't understand you guys. You guys, I say that's called faith. Amen. And that's what I always, I always, I always pray for that. For you and me to have the gift of faith. So get ready. Amen. I'm here to talk about the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. But I'm going to ask again, Deacon Doug, you need to be ready. And don't wait for God. God, I'm waiting for you because God is waiting for God. God is waiting for you. And I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit for each and every one of you, even for the sisters. They're probably holier than us. <laughs> that the Holy Spirit gives you those wonderful exercises, the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit, but also the charismatic gifts. Amen? Charismatic gifts, they're amazing. The gift of tongues. I, I heard somebody speaking in tongues. That's beautiful. That is wonderful. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Let it, let it flow. Cause I'm not afraid to be a, you know, if somebody tells me I'm, I'm a fool. I don't care. It's God. It's the Holy Spirit. So we, in this society, they always point out, ah, look at that. Those guys are crazy. You know, it's funny because when I came in, I, I saw some people across the street, they're probably separate brethren. Yeah. And they were like, eh, 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 which is nice. But then I heard over here, I go, is it over there or over here? Because over here, it was, it was, it was beautiful. So I'm briefly going to talk about the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. You already know them, but I really want you to know and understand that I came and the Holy Spirit told me that. Go and pray and remind each, each person that is there that tonight I am going to shower you with special gifts. Gift of tongues, gift of healing. And I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit, if there any of you, or even if there's a little bit of doubt in your heart, that God can do miracles to take that away. That is my purpose here tonight. That's what I want. Because this world needs people like us to go out there and preach the gospel. It is true what the, the brother was saying. There are no better, there's no better way for me. My happiness is... Preach the word of God. I just had a retreat recently about in April. And also on April 7th, 8th, and 9th, on the 6th, my sister calls me and says, you know, Gloria, I grew up with Gloria. I grew up with my grandparents. Again, cancer, very aggressive. That's what she told me because she didn't want to tell me the whole truth, right? But she started talking, oh, she's got cancer. I go, how, how sick is, is she? She's very sick. And I'm going to go see her. This was on the 6th. I was having a, a retreat, 7th, 8th, and 9th. So she went to Guadalajara. We're from Michoacan, but they took her over there. And one of the things that was so beautiful, because Gloria, my, I grew up with her. I don't call her Tia. You know, she's my sister. She was in Guadalajara, but... Her children were in Mexico, so she told, I want my kids to be here. This is on Sunday when they go. And she tells them, do you see me crying? Because she, she knew, doctors knew. So she tells her children, do you see me crying? Because she wasn't. And they're like, no. And she tells them, you know why I'm not crying? No, because I know where I'm going. And I have so much peace in my heart, and I know where I'm going. So she tells her children, if, if I don't cry, I don't want you to cry, because God is good. 
When I never heard that in my life, someone that is dying saying God is good. And that's just God. That reminds me of the, when the uh, apostles are in that room afraid and Jesus says, peace be with you. And that's what she felt in her heart. She died that Sunday. And she told her kids, I don't want you to cry. I don't even want you to, you know, dress in black. Because in Mexico, when someone dies, we dress in black. It's like, I don't want you to dress like that. I want you to be happy because I'm going with God. And that to me, that's, that's the Holy Spirit that guides us and tells us what to do. And the Holy Spirit is the one that we give our lives to. And sometimes we might be a little, a little afraid to give control of our lives to the Holy Spirit, but it'll be okay. It'll be fun. And sometimes it will be difficult, but he will give you the strength to, to go on with your life. Life is not easy when the Holy Spirit guides you. You know, my son started, just started working. Um, he's going to college because he wants to work about three months ago. And he believes in God, of course. He goes to the church every Sunday. And he's got, he has some difficulties with a person that, that doesn't like him at work, right? And he tells me, Dad, why? Why is God doing this to me? I go, it's not doing this to you. It's just, you're going to learn from this experience. Don't be afraid. My, my son is 18 years old. And so much faith. And that's, I give that, I give, I have to give um, credit to my wife because she's the one that's raising. Okay, so when you pray, will you please uh, pray for my wife's mother? Her name is Aurelia that God may heal her, please. Amen? Amen. Don't get sad. I'm, I'm okay. We're fine. We're good. I couldn't go to Mexico because I had that retreat. I was organizing that retreat, but it was a beautiful retreat. And what makes me happy, when I see people coming into a retreat on Friday like this, and you've seen it, some people, I even ask, are you here because you want to come here? No, my mom told me. One guy came to me and said, they lied to me. What happened? They told me I was going to go to the mountains. Are you in the mountains? Yes, but not in a retreat. They didn't lie to you. You're in the mountains. You just came to a retreat. But I've seen, I've seen how, how the Holy Spirit changes their lives. And that's what, full, that's what fills me up. That's what makes me happy. God, my family, but makes me so happy. It makes me so happy to see you guys. I was back there just sitting when you were praying, when you're praising God. That makes me happy. But we cannot let it stay here. We have to go out there. Why? People need to see the happiness that you have. I want to have someone, what that brother, what, what's his name? I keep saying the brother in the beginning. Eddie. I want, I want some of that, you know, that. Ah, Eddie, you know, I want some of that, some of that fuego, right? I want fuego like that because I'm 54 and uh, the fuego is not longer there. It's in the heart, but it's not, it's not physically, you know, but <laughs> there you go. One more, what is my point? My point is that people need to see you like that. But you're here, you're like, eh, I learned. and then over there, like, hey. How you doing? No, we need to be like the people need to see you. They need to say, I want to be Catholic, man, because I want to, I want some of what he has. Look at, he's going through a difficult time and, it, and he loves God. He says God is good. Why, why is he saying that? We need to show that to those people out there. Amen. We need that. And I'm going to ask William to go to my church and preach over there. Because uh, I just love the way you preach, bro. I do. So the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. I'm just going to go real quick because I really want to pray. And I'm going to ask Roca Fuerte while we pray to, to, play, to play something. Okay? So that's what I came here to do tonight. Came to pray for you. And I came to ask the Holy Spirit again to give you special gifts. Just like Pentecost. Just look at those apostles. They were locked up. Just imagine it. And then what happened? They were preaching the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? So it is, it is, it is wonderful. So seven gifts of the Holy Spirit, you already know them, so I'm going to go really quick. Wisdom. 
The gift of wisdom, we see God at work in our lives and in the world. For the wise person, the wonders of nature, historical events, and the ups and downs of our lives take a deeper meaning. Wisdom. So there's going to be a little quiz at the end. How many? Okay. <laughs> understanding. In understanding, we comprehend how we need to live as a follower of Christ. A person with understanding is not confused by all the conflicting messages in our culture about their right to live. I'm going to make a pause right now. Our society right now, it, it, it is sad. Some people don't even know who they are anymore. They don't know who they are anymore. They don't know who they are. And you know what I'm talking about. And I'm very respectful, but they don't know who they are anymore. They don't understand that God gave them a gift. And they don't know who they are anymore. And that makes me, makes me sad. Counsel, the, the other gift of the Holy Spirit. Right judgment. With the gift of counsel, right judgment, we know the difference between right and wrong, and we choose to do what is right. You know, the gift, the, the gift of counsel, I don't know if I, this happened to you guys. I know it does. People sometimes come to me and they say, Deacon, I want to talk to you because I'm having issues in my matrimony, in my marriage. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, what am I going to What am I gonna say? Holy Spirit, please enlighten me. And then you sit down and you talk to them and... Whatever it is that came from out of your mouth, you've never thought about it. Automatically, boom. Even when we preach, we preach something at mass and people come in. And, do, you know, do, you, do you know me? Who told you? <laughs> Nobody. But it's the Holy Spirit. Every time we preach, yes, brother. Every time we preach and we share, we're like, Holy Spirit, just guide me. Just guide me. Tell me what to say. Tell me what to do. And. Oh, man, that's how God works. And they come to you, thank you. And it's not, not thank me, thank God. Amen. So the same thing. We all have the same, with that gift too. So when someone comes to you and, hey, I, I need to talk to you. Don't, uh, what am I going to say? Just ask the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, just guide me. What am I going to tell these people? The gift of counsel. So use it as the Holy Spirit. Okay. Fortitude, courage. With the gift of the fortitude, courage. We overcome our fear and are willing to take risk as a follower of Christ. 42. That's what the Holy Spirit gives us. That's what the Holy Spirit gave me when my mother died 15 years ago. My knees were shaking, but I felt this had to come from the Holy Spirit. Because it was my mother. She was being disconnected from life support. My knees were shaking, but at the same time, I felt so much peace in my heart. And I was told... She's fine now. It, it, was, it was something so amazing, so wonderful. Knowledge. With the gift of knowledge, we understand the meaning of God. The gift of knowledge is more than an accumulation of facts. Piety. Reverence. With the gift of reverence, sometimes called piety, we have a deep sense of respect for God and the church. Whenever I come here and I say something, you guys got to make sure, and I know Deacon Doug also, whoever comes here, they got to be teach, they got to be teaching what the church teaches. Amen? We have to be careful because there's some people out there, they're going to teach you something that is not right. Some people in our church, unfortunately, they think they know better. They think they know better. Their mother church. I was taught, I'm not going to say where, I was taught that, you know, that, what's that place before you enter heaven or that you need to purify yourself? Purgatory. purgatory. <laughs> I was taught the purgatory didn't exist. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I'm you say, yeah, it doesn't exist. I was going to sister, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> but that's what some people teach so when you hear something like that also another i'm not gonna say the name i'm not gonna say which our diocese he works but he said oh you know when jesus was giving uh how many did he feed with two fishes and right five thousand that was just the man right you know what he said this teacher 
this theologian, you know what he said? He was sharing. See, what happened was a lot of people went to hear Jesus preach, and they took lunch, extra lunch. So t Jesus touched their heart, and they're like, hey, I have five burritos. I can only eat one. So that's what happened. Be careful. Always follow church teaching. Always. 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 Right now, there's... I'm not going to go into it. Anyways. No, because sometimes they want to confuse us. They want to confuse us. You know, like Pope said, I don't know how many months ago, God does not bless sin. Remember that? And then there's a little movement. I don't know which archdiocese. I don't, I don't think it was this one. There's a movement that says, hey, that was wrong. We're disappointed in the Pope that said that. Be careful. Always follow church teaching. Okay, so that's, we need to have that knowledge. Piety. The last one, the fear of the Lord. What is the fear of the Lord? I, when I was little, Dios te va a castigar. God is going to punish you. Ah! And I was afraid of God. But that's not what a fear of the Lord is. I know, I understand. It's, I fear, fear of the Lord means I'm afraid to hurt you. I'm afraid to do something to you. I'm afraid to sin. That is fear. Of the Lord, Amen. It's not like, oh God is watching me. I used to, I used to think God was like a, like a cop, like a police officer. He was writing everything, uh, but it wasn't like that. So I got more notes. You know, I was ready, and I'm not gonna go. I'm not gonna do that. So at this point, I really want to pray for you. I'm gonna ask Deacon Doug to come up here and pray for each and every one of you. And I want you to be ready. I want you to be open. Okay, this is gonna be a different night. A total different night. Don't think right now, and here we come. No, it is going to be different. So this is how we're going to do it. One line, two lines, we pray for you. Is Roca Fuerte going to sing, por favor? Anything that you guys want, something with the Holy Spirit, something mellow, yes? You guys want the lights on or off? And remember, you don't have to fall, but we're going to ask, and I'm going to ask my brother Deacon Doug also to pray for each and every one of you so you, re you receive not the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit because you already have them, but I'm going to ask for charisms. I'm going to ask for the Holy Spirit to, to start for you to, to release, to let God be God, to let God do whatever he wants in your life. And let the Holy Spirit guide you. Let the Holy give your life tonight to the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we're gonna do that. So whenever you guys are ready.